go ahead and call this meeting to order. Good afternoon, everyone. Good to see you. Welcome. It is Friday, February 26th, 3.01 p.m., and we are in our special meeting today. So uh, before we do the roll call, I will read our board norms and protocols. As a board, we agree to respect the differences of opinions in making decisions for the district, to follow best practices in managing the superintendent and the management of the board itself, to stay on task when conducting business for the district, including while at board meetings, to never surprise the superintendent or each other when conducting official business of the district, to read these norms at the beginning of each board meeting and at board workshops as a reminder of how to conduct our meetings and to continually self-check to determine if we are following our norms when conducting district business. With that, Ms. Smith, would you do a roll call, please? Yolanda Clark. Yolanda Clark, present. Maxine Drew. Maxine Drew, present. Janie Humphreys. Janie Humphreys, present. Randy Lopez. Randy Lopez, present. Wanda Brownlee Page. Page, present. Dr. Wynn. Dr. Wynn, present. And Dr. Yeager. Present. Thank you. So, well, thank you, everybody. It's so great to see y'all. Y'all bring a smile to my face today. So. <laughs> With that, I would uh, entertain approval for a motion to approve today's special agenda. So moved. Second. Seconded. Miss roll call, please. Yolanda Clark. Yolanda Clark, yes. Maxine Drew. Maxine Drew, yes. Janie Humphreys. Uh, Janie Humphreys, yes. Randy Lopez. Randy Lopez, yes. Wanda Brownlee Page. <laughs> Wanda Brownlee Page. Oh, I think I'm on Wanda Brownlee Page. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Wynn. Dr. Wynn, yes. And Dr. Yeager. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. So before I hand it off to Dr. Miguel, um, just wanted to, to uh, remind everyone of why we're here. So, um, you know, as you recall, last year, uh, the board had asked um, to review salaries and contracts and benefit packages for our staff for administrative level. And, and so staff has really done a great job and, um, uh, to make sure that, that they put the information together that the board has requested. And so I just want to say thank you to the staff for working on this um, and bringing this to us so that we can have this conversation um, in a timely fashion as well. As we're embarking upon budget workshops and budget season, um, this is a, a, a nice step in that direction to make sure that we have the full picture and information as we, as we go down this budget road. So um, thank you, board, for your time. I, I know we ask a lot of your time, so I, I just want to tell you how much we appreciate you spending time with us um, to get the get this job done. So with that, I'll hand it off to Dr. Miguel um, to facilitate the discussion. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. You said everything I was going to say, so <laughs> this is very easy. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to remind the board that there had been some conversation um, last spring, I believe, about compensation and some of the benefits packets. Um, so um, knowing that we are getting ready to start the budget process, we thought it would be nice to have some um, um, time just to look at this and to share with you. Um, Rachel from HR is here with us and she's done a, an amazing job of researching all of this in the surrounding districts and preparing the presentation that she will share with you in a few minutes um, so that um, we would have some time today. This is for information only. We are not asking you to make any decisions today. Um, so we thought we would bring this information to you today. Um, we have some um, discussion points at the end um, just to open up for conversation and for questions from you. Then we would um, submit this information to you um, and give you some time to um, um, just uh, look at all, it's a lot of information. So to look at all of this, think of what additional questions you may have for us, send the questions to us and maybe schedule a second time if the board decides to either take, a, take some action or if you would want more information from us so that we can uh, bring that additional information to you. So, so knowing that today we're just presenting the information, it's uh, an informational item and we will ask you uh, no action at the end. Um, but we're hoping that it will generate some questions or, or some thoughts on your, on your um, side and then we'll open up just for discussion. So with that, um, happy Friday to everyone. And um, I will pass it on to Ms. Tushman to introduce Rachel to us, please. 
You're muted, Kelly. <laughs> Okay, so I will, um, I, something is wrong with, with Kelly's computer. And if you have to restart Kelly, that's okay. I'm going to introduce um, Rachel Swartz to you. She's um, one of our HR representatives and has done extensive work on this, has put together a really thorough presentation. And uh, Rachel, I don't know if you want to share anything else about you before uh, taking us to this presentation, it's up to you. But I think it's the first time you're in front of the board, right? So I wanted to right. give you a chance to at least say hi and introduce yourself. So hi, everybody. Good afternoon. I hope everybody got a chance to go out and enjoy a little bit of the sun that peeked through the clouds. Um, <clears throat> so I'm Rachel Swartz. I am the Total Rewards Advisor for HR, and I also do compensation analysis for the district. So um, as was previously mentioned, I did the research and the presentation of information for classified staff last year. And so this year we wanted to go ahead and address some of the questions that were posed last year, as well as just look more into the information that we have available to us um, when we're looking at comparable districts. And can we hear Kelly? No. All right. Well, I'll launch into it and hopefully she's able to. Uh, Is still muted? Yeah, it looks like we are unable to hear her at least. I am. So. Hmm. Oh, let's see here. There you are. Now we can, can hear, hear you. Can you hear me? Now you can hear yes. me? Okay. Yes. I'm, I'm sitting here going, I don't know what is going on. So, and that's what we hear when you were giving us that big sigh. <laughs> I, just, I just prayed the Lord said, oh, Lord, he help me. So, you know, I don't, I don't know what happened. But um, sorry, guys, I, uh, I don't know. I'm in the office and it, it doesn't normally do this, but sometimes we have a little malfunction. Um, so, Rachel is our great comp analyst who has done a lot of great work for us and she's put a lot of time into this analysis and I'm just going to go ahead and let her start because I think she was down that path anyway. Um, and I think a lot of your questions you, you might have will hopefully be answered as she walks through the presentation. And then of course we'll have time at the end to have additional questions or comments. So I apologize for the uh, speaker issue or the microphone issue. Okay, so what we reviewed at this time was the administrative and executive compensation levels. So starting out this process, we went ahead and gathered publicly reported and self-reported data on the structure, revenue, and spending practices for the comparable districts. For comparable districts, we went ahead and used the comparable districts in the metro area, as well as going out and getting some information on comparable districts as far as at-risk students go, for Wichita and Topeka. Um, and so what we'll see as we go through the data is that Wichita is about twice our size in most areas and Topeka is about half our size. But because of the groups of individuals that they serve, um, we wanted to include them in the analysis just so we have a good range of information. So the, the data sources that we did use were Kansas Open Gov Data Bank, the district websites, contacts that we have at those districts, as well as contracts that were provided, and the KSDE. So the information that we gathered from those sources were organizational charts, total compensation data, additional compensation components within that total compensation, and then budget and revenue data. Um, we then analyzed the organizational structures to ensure that when we were comparing positions to our positions here at KCKPS, that we were actually using positions that had comparable oversight within the district and also had similar reporting. And so then we ran an analysis to determine how we actually compare to the other districts in the analysis and in our area. So the first part that we're gonna look at is actual compensation spending. So what we'll see here is a breakdown of the percentage of actual spending that each district has on their compensation. 
And the main thing that is shown here is that most of the spending for compensation goes to that certified and classified non-exempt group. The next group for most of the districts that receives the biggest chunk would be the principals and assistant principals. The only exceptions that we see in these districts to that rule would be the exempt classified managers and administrators for Blue Valley and Topeka actually get a small percentage more than the principals and assistant principals when you look at all the compensation spending. And then finally, the smallest group at each of the districts was the executive leadership. So that's gonna be your top level chiefs, executive directors and the IAOs. Now, the next thing that we're gonna look out here is the exact same information, but it's the actual monetary information. So this is gonna give you figures instead of percentages, but otherwise reflects all the same information. So I'll just give you a second to look at this in case you were interested in the actual numbers that were attached to those percentages from the prior slide. Rachel, who are the classified managers and administrators, please? The, excuse me, the exempt classified managers? So exempt classified managers and administrators are gonna be individuals like directors, assistant directors, or operations managers. Thank you. Mm -hmm. To clarify, do you have this broken down in percentages later on as a comparative to the other areas? Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm, there I'm you not go. quite, yeah. So Thanks. this would be the percentages and let me go ahead and zoom in and kind of make it so that we can see most of those there. Pick up a little bit, Rachel, a little bit hard to hear. I'm sorry, let me move my microphone. Maybe that'll help. Yeah. All right, is that better? Yes, that's better. Okay, I, wonderful. I like to see both the numbers and percentages to, mm -hmm. to see how we compare. So, mm -hmm. oh, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So what we see is about 90% at most of the districts for that certified and classified non-exempt group. Um, whereas Topeka and Blue Valley, it's more 85% at Blue Valley and 89% for Topeka. And then the principals and assistant principals are in the four to 5% range um, with 6% at Blue Valley. Um, exempt classified managers and administrators are gonna be in that 3% um, and five and 6% at Blue Valley. And then executive leadership is somewhere within the range of 0.5% up to 1.7% of the annual spending for compensation at the districts. But but this just shows that this is exactly how you would expect it. You would want it to look that the majority of your dollars are at your uh, line level employees and the least amount of dollars being spent is at your very top executive levels. So it's just showing that that is exactly the case and it is the same for all, all districts that we compare it to. Are you going to email this to us so that we can? Yeah. Yeah, so that you can look at it further. Yeah, because this is, time. my yeah, screen is very small. Um, okay. Ms. Humphreys, my plan is to email it to all of you at the end of uh, today with my Friday update. Okay, thank you. And, and if, you, if you would all want us to print and deliver those to you, um, we can also do that um, next week. I can print it out on my printer, it's just okay. that... I've got a the small laptop screen and it's very difficult to. But if any of you want to reach out and get a packet, an actual packet, we can do that too. Well, can you print me a packet? I'll pick it up. Okay, I'm for sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we'll also include a slide in there with all of those figures in a table for each district as well. So you can see them as a group. Yeah. And so then the next component we looked at was revenue stream by district. So this information is, reflects that at KCKPS, we're seeing about 70% of our revenue stream comes from state revenue. The next highest level is gonna be the federal revenue at 11.9%, local revenue at 9.8%, and then other revenue, which would be gr gifts, grants, any kind of student activities or ticket sales, anything along those lines at 8.4% for Kansas City. So what we can see is Wichita and Olathe or I'm sorry, Wichita and Topeka are very similar to us in their state revenue percentage. <clears throat> so we're seeing 70%. They are at 69.5 and 67.2 respectively. Um, 
we are also with comparative with Wichita as far as our percentage of federal revenue at that 11.9 and 11.8%. When you look at Olathe, Shawnee Mission, and Blue Valley, they're comparable in their state revenue at 60, 55, and 44. And then mostly at their local revenue, they're in the 30% percent of, their local rev- of their revenue streams is that local revenue piece. So Olathe and Shawnee Mission, again, are similar with their federal revenue in that five, 6% range. And then they only stand out in this group would be the other funding at Blue Valley is at 13.5%, which is the highest percentage we see in the comparison districts we have. Next highest being Topeka at 9.2. And so then we dive right into actually comparing positions. So we decided to go ahead and start at the top and just do a general total compensation comparison between the districts that we were looking at. So at the superintendent level, we're seeing that Olathe, Blue Valley, Wichita, Shawnee Mission, we're all kind of in the same grouping, with the outlier being Topeka at that low end of, at 244. Assistant superintendent compensation was the next level down that we looked at. And so here that would be the interim superintendent. So a comparable position at the other districts is going to be their deputy superintendent. So again, we see. Oh, I'm larger. sorry. Yes. Yeah. Again, we see the grouping of Shawnee Mission, Olathe, and Blue Valley being competitive, and then the lower grouping of Wichita, Kansas City, and Topeka in that 170, 160, and 150s range. And what we were able to do is through our contacts at the other districts, we were able to break this down into a total compensation package at this level. So what we can see here is that our actual total compensation packages are all very similar and are all very competitive with each other. <clears throat> so all of the districts offer some sort of a value of family plan benefit. Um, they include mileage in their package and Shawnee Mission also includes some, a deferred compensation of 20,000 for their assistant superintendent level. The next level that we went ahead and took a look at was the chief's total compensation. So at this level, we're looking at the chief of human resources, chief operation officer, chief financial officer, chief of staff. And at the other districts, this would be an associate or assistant superintendent or a chief of HR. So again, we have the grouping where Shawnee Mission is coming out at the top and Kansas City, Olathe and Blue Valley are all grouped there in the middle. Wichita and Topeka are at the low end on this breakdown. But again, we are seeing the same trends where we are still pretty competitive here. And so when we actually look at the total compensation package breakdown for this group again, we're seeing that here again, the total compensation package that we offer is going to be very similar and very competitive with the other districts, with Shawnee Mission being that high end outlier again. And at the final level that we reviewed here was the executive directors and IAO total compensation. The comparable positions here would be a chief or executive director at the other districts. And here again, we see the same trend where we have Shawnee Mission, Olathe, Blue Valley are kind of grouped together and then Wichita, Kansas City and Topeka are falling in together um, about 10 to $20,000 lower. And this breakdown is going to be, whoops, sorry. This breakdown is gonna be where we actually start seeing a difference at this level in what they offer in their total compensation package. All of the districts still offer very similar compensation packages and all of the districts have very similar components, um, but we see a decrease in the amounts that are offered in the total value of benefits are no longer a family benefit at all the districts. And then the mileage amounts reduce. The other difference that we see here is Shawnee Mission's deferred compensation drops considerably from that $20,000 at the higher levels to $3,100 at this level. But again, the overall package that is offered by each district is very similar and very competitive. Okay. 
And so then the next level down that we wanted to look at was that administration compensation. We did review them last year, but we wanted to dig deeper and make sure that we were actually competitive and able to attract the best talent to the district. So when we look at the districts, we can see that the districts in our area have very similar enrollment and budgets to us, and that the outlier districts that we pulled in for the state have about half the enrollment at Topeka and budget, and half or double the enrollment and budget at Wichita almost. But the differences that we see in the average salaries is that across the board, we are coming in low. So let's go ahead and look a little deeper into the directors. So those average salaries that we were seeing were Blue Valley and Shawnee Mission up at the 125, Olathe at 107 with Wichita at 106, and then Topeka was right there in the middle of about $112,000. Kansas City is coming in at 98, and these are averages. So our average director salary is $98,000 currently. But we aren't really seeing those differences when we look at the spending amounts um, that they spend on the compensation overall. So the percentages that we're seeing are all within a percentage point of each other. So the salaries though, are all almost 10,000 or more than our averages. So what we would recommend is next steps, we would go in and do a full analysis and <clears throat> look at something like this, where we would have a current starting and where we are currently sitting and what we would recommend moving to, and then what that would cost for our current individuals in those positions to actually make that kind of a move. The same is apparent in assistant directors, where we have the higher groups with Blue Valley and Shawnee Mission. However, here we see that we fall in a little closer to that grouping in Olathe, Topeka, and Wichita. So what we would recommend here is, again, we would look for a bit of a shift, but not as much of a shift, just so that we can remain competitive and are still attracting those best candidates. And so this example of a recommendation would be at a lower cost. And then finally, we would look at principles and assistant principles. And what we see here is that the principles at Blue Valley are coming in an average of about 124. And Wichita, Olathe, and Shawnee Mission are all kind of grouped about in that 110 range. Kansas City, Kansas is coming in at $98,000. So we're seeing at least a $10,000 difference there. And same with the system principles, where we're seeing about a five to $15,000, if not more, difference in our average salaries at these levels. So what do we want to do? Because we know we pay differently depending on the level of um, school that the individual is serving in, we would go ahead and break them out further and get some averages for salaries for assistant principals at the elementary and middle level, assistant principals at the high school level, and then principals at the elementary, middle, and high school levels as well. So as we start gathering that data, we'll have a little more comprehensive look at how we measure up at those levels and what kind of a recommendation we'd be looking at to make for, for the future. And so what we can see from the current analysis and the takeaways right now would be that we are currently marketable at that executive total compensation level. The total package that we offer does measure up to the other districts that we are looking at, at and we all offer that value of a family plan and we have similar components within our total compensation. Now what we are wanting to look further into then would be that we do become less competitive when we move to that next level down at the administrator level. And so we want to do further analysis in order to be make be able to make any kind of a recommendation for an adjustment needed in those areas. So, okay, like we that, said, yeah, mm -hmm. do you have right. any questions? Go ahead, Rachel. I was going to say, um, Rachel went through that. I know that's a lot of data, lot so of we data. can actually go back and look at some of the charts if you'd like to, or take any questions. Because I, I recognize one of the problems is these screens. I hope everybody could see it pretty well when she was bringing them up into an enlarged state, but if not, we're happy to go back and 
you know, go back through the, um, any of the charts or descriptions. Uh, but I do want to just stress again, you know, what we found is we are very competitive, of course, on the executive comp, which is the, the, the first set of charts we showed and that our focus, we would like to make a recommendation on, it would be really in the principal, assistant principal director and, and uh, assistant director and that we will do around the budgeting time period. So Rachel's kind of highlighted the areas that we feel like we're uh, needing to make adjustments and giving you some idea of how much those adjustments might need to be. But for us to give you a real dollar value, we're gonna have to do a little bit more research and analysis on our side. But that just gives you an idea of kind of what we think we'll be looking at um, from a budgeting perspective this next year. So questions or comments? Well, I'd like to start. Um, thank you, Rachel. Nice meeting you and um, appreciate your work. And the conversation that I have had with Kelly Tishman and others is that the legislative post audit determined that Olathe, neither Olathe or Blue Valley or Shawnee Mission were our peers. So that perhaps you could look at Turner, uh, Piper and Bonner are too small, um, however, the, the um, and Wichita, of course, is twice the size, but the, um, the challenge that I think we haven't addressed while we know it, but you didn't say anything about it, is that the tax base is out of kilter, that Wyandotte County has a lesser tax base. The mill pulls something like, um, um, we can get the figures, you know, 600,000 compared to 2 million. So those, they're not our peers. Now they are in the metro area. And yes, we are competing, competing with the people because 90, 80 or 90% of our faculty live in Johnson County. Um, but the, the analysis is excellent. The comparison I think has a, perhaps a logical fallacy because they are not our peer districts. So, you know, that, that has to be plainly stated. Plus when you include your state dollars, are you including the supplemental aid to make the difference between the, um, I don't know, Greg, you'll have to give me that, that phrase of the- The at-risk money and the wages. No, no, mm -mm, nothing like that. The property, the local, the local, let's say, what is it? The um, local, option. LLB. local option that you get, and then the the equity piece, and trying to backfill some of the differences. What's that called? It's not supplemental state aid, but the question is that the the state aid that you're saying we get that probably includes the amount that is. Um, it may be supplemental state aid, Greg. Right? Does Tracy or Dennis maybe know the answer? Yeah, to that? Dr. Wynn, are you referring to like the um, state aid, the LOB state aid? To, to compensate for the differences in taxing authority? Okay, so, Tra so Rachel, are, does that include that? Correct. So um, any state aid we receive would be in that red line. Okay. So yes, that would make up the difference between what our taxpayers pay and what the state pays. And, and of course it doesn't make it up the, exactly, well, but the, the state aid in Shawnee Mission, Blue Valley and Olathe um, is not the same. Correct, we would, re we would receive more state aid and less burden would be on our taxpayers as far as per dollar. Because we have a lower tax base value. Correct. So I'm just saying that it's, it's great. I mean, it's true data. No one is questioning the, the numbers <laughs> because they are there. Um, but there's, there's a bit of um, a, a logical fallacy as far as the comparison, the comparativeness of the, the Olathe Shawnee Mission Blue Valley. All right. And well, maybe I a clarification that, that may be useful for us. Um, just to make sure that um, that we're able to uh, meet the expectations of, of um, why the board uh, wants this um, 
this comparison or how, or how it may be more useful is our initial thought was we would stay within the state just because um, like Dr. Wynn said, you know, these are the districts that we're probably competing um, against most of the time for staff. So, so to us, it made sense to say if we are hiring a principal, um, we know that a principal would have options. So, um, and, and the, and the um, logical options would be Shawnee Mission, Blue Valley, Olathe. Um, and, and we didn't compare with Piper Bonner and Turner just because they are so much more smaller than um, we thought we would go for um, districts that are similar or equal, or in some cases we wanted to show what happens when it's double the size and that may explain some of the differences, but trying to stay within similar districts, but also districts uh, around the area because we are probably not competing with a district in Iowa or, you know, we, um, but, but, if, but if you would want us to try to do a comparison with uh, districts of similar size in other states, if that would be useful, we can go that route. I, we were thinking more in terms of what would place us, Kansas City, Kansas Public Schools, in a better position to compete for the best candidates. And, and no, Dr. McGill, that was not the, the intent at all. Because mm -hmm. Iowa does not compare with Kansas City, Kansas right. at all. That was so, just an example. That was right. But, but this is what I'm saying. Let's recognize that the tax base sure. is the 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 the, the um, foundation of of the entire budget, entire budget. Mm -hmm. And so when when again, you have to know what what the data says. So I truly appreciate the data. And so what we also have to recognize, in my opinion, is that we have the tax base of Kansas City, Kansas even, not Wyandotte County. We're mm -hmm. Kansas City, Kansas. And so to, this is, this again, this is one component. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't see it um, reflected here in either in the, the editorial or something. Well, I can certainly pull the same information for Turner and Piper and Bonner, if you would like, and add it Piper to the- Piper and Bonner students. don't compare either because they're no, like 1,600 1600 students or, uh, I don't know the population of Turner. Okay. I'm not well, 1,600. I can certainly get that information and add it to these slides, if that's- I think it's confusing about clarification no, about what, what the yeah. ask is. I think there's confusion about what the ask is. I think that's what's conflicting. Are you asking them to do a comparison or just to note that there's a difference between the surrounding pet area? Are you asking me? Yes. Mm -hmm. No, the ask is not to get the, the information from Piper and Bonner because we know they don't compare. I'm not asking for anything. I'm just stating a fact oh. that the data that you're presenting from Olathe, Shawnee Mission, and Blue Valley are not our, they are not our peer districts. That they have been, they may be what we feel like we are our peers, but the legislative post audit after their research said they are not. And the key to that not being our peers is the tax base. So Would I'm not asking for anything. Oh, I tell you what, excuse me, I would ask, for the information, what is a mill raise? That may explain to some of us that if one dollar raises X, one dollar raises Y, and the differences of, of, of funding the public education. So that's what I meant, Dr. Yeager. Uh, Dr. Wynn, would you clarify what we're being compared to? I think that would help. You said we're not compared to those in our pet districts. Which ones are they comparing us to? They may compare us to, to Topeka and Wichita because you have that many, the, the demographics is the same, that, that we're almost half the size. When you say, Rachel, all your, your mm -hmm. data points were almost half the size of Wichita. Yes, and then almost twice the size of Topeka. Mm -hmm. so, so that's the, the comparison there. Now, I, 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 I'm not a statistician as, as Rachel is. 
she 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 eats and breathes numbers she and does. that's why she is here <laughs> so i do I'm like not, my data and spreadsheets yeah so <laughs> i'm not questioning ability i'm not questioning results i'm not questioning i mean if if you ask rachel to do a thousand things it would be easy that's not what i'm asking i'm just saying when we say we have to pay what blue valley pays it's not um it's not backed by the data that you consider um, what your tax base is. That's all I'm saying. And 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 maybe to, um, to explain our thinking also um, in um, in terms of being able to compete for best candidates, which is where where I think this comparison comes in for us at least. Um, I. I I agree with Dr. Wynn, you know, there is a clear difference among these districts and it would be great information for all of us to understand that. Um, at the end of the day, when we offer a job to a candidate, um, if the salary is significantly less, um, I don't think it ever comes into conversation about um, the, the tax meal rate or um, the tax base. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, we have lost a really um, capable principals to other districts in this surrounding area because their salaries were so much better. I do I have a question. How do we compare to, um, I know we're staying in Kansas, but I think we compete as well with Missouri. Yeah. Um, and we can have and, and, and so I would be interested to, to know mm -hmm. um, their comparison, because I think they have similar districts. Um, North Kansas City has a little bit of different, different demographics, um, but you know there were a couple of um, principals and teachers of color who left to go to either of those districts. That is, that is very accurate, um, Dr. Yeager, and we and we do lose teachers all the time to North Kansas City and to Kansas City, Missouri. And um, we had that conversation and I'm, I'm glad you're bringing it up because I think that could be our next step mm -hmm. to this comparison and to specifically target those districts that are not, that are out of state, but still very close to us and strong competitors. So I'm adding it to the list and, and I think we could come back with a but second but I would add that I think there's value in also, I know we talked about, or, and it wasn't a, um, a strong decision of how can we help those who live in Kansas City, Kansas have some kind of advantage because those who live here, who work here, you know, and we see that a lot want to come back who are, who live in our, inside of our district. Mm -hmm. And I know we had kicked around a little bit, what can we do to help incentivize or encourage for those within our boundaries since they are paying the taxes that will ultimately come back to us. Uh, how can we help retain them or encourage them a little more to be able to come back to our district? Um, certainly um, if they decided to look for opportunities with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Dr. Miguel, I have a question as well. Um, we're talking compensation and I get that compensation sometimes goes a little bit further than dollars. And so when we're talking about our individuals and what they're looking for, or why they're choosing other places, are there other things outside of dollars that we should be looking at? I'd hate for us to put, to fix one thing, but we have all these other glaring issues. Mm -hmm. and, and we do do um, exit interviews when, when staff leave. So we could, um, we could bring um, maybe what, what threats we see about people who uh, leave. I know that compensation has been brought up um, many times, especially I think at the, at the principal level. Um, Kelly, is there anything that you can think of off yeah. the top of your head or might we plan just no. to bring? I um, think we, we can bring some more data. Uh, the truth is we, we do not get a very high percentage of our employees who fill out exit interviews. When people are done, yeah, when they're done, they're done usually. Um, but the reality is that, yeah, I mean, always, I would tell you from an HR professional, people leave people, they, they leave uh, some supervisors, leaders that they don't want to work for. 
Um, and then compensation usually is number two. It's not the first thing. It's when, and so, however, I will say this, when you're not competitive, it doesn't matter if you're 10,000, 20,000 off of what other people are paying, people will leave because that's a lot of money. Um, and so those are kind of decision points everybody has to make uh, based on, you know, what they're trying to accomplish. But I think when you're at this, what, what we're talking about with principals and assistant principals, directors and assistant directors, I, I do think it starts impacting people's decisions. Even if they want to work here, the reality is they can just make more uh, by not driving very far to another district and, and get a, a big increase. So, but I'm happy to share what exit interview information we have. Um, it, it's just that I can just tell you, we don't, we get maybe 10% of those, uh, you know, those interviews back. So I have two, two more points that I just wanna make sure I mention. I don't know how our exit interviews are being handled if there's just an email that says, hey, you complete this before you leave. Um, and just my, I don't, I don't know how that's handled, but in my experience, sometimes it takes a little bit more than just an yeah. email to people. So uh, maybe it's a, a actual conversation with people we, before they leave uh, and you get a little bit more information there. And then yeah, we, you know, that's a great suggestion. Yolanda, we've been working on all of that uh, this last year, trying to make phone calls and reaching out. I, I That is exactly right. You got to try more than one thing to try to get people to uh, respond. Yeah, if I'm leaving, I'm probably not going to go in and fill out your one more survey that you're yeah. sending. So just something to think about there. Um, and then the last thing is when we talk about trends, maybe it is two or three. I agree with you on dollars, but you're right. People do leave people. So if I feel like I'm underpaid and I don't like my manager, then that gives me a probable cost to leave. So that's yeah. why I think those tie back together. Yeah, you're right. And, and this is Wanda Brownlee Faith. Some of the people who leave us, some that I talked to left because they didn't feel they had a chance of mobility. They were stuck and they didn't feel the system was fair. And a lot of them were afraid to really tell the truth for fear of retribution. Now, you know, not many people are just gonna say, hey, you didn't treat me right, you suck, you blame. But then they also know wherever else I'm going, I need a recommendation or I need something from you. So it's easier just to say, I, I'm just looking for something different. Because a lot of them didn't tell the truth. Or they didn't fill it out at all. Well, I'll just circle back again to the economic aspect. In this metro area, it is an established fact that now, Rachel, you have to give me the ranking now. 2021, what is the ranking of the um, of Johnson County nationwide? It used to be the third richest county in the nation. What is it now? Um, I don't have that right. But I know you can find that real quick. Greg, you know? Still the third or fourth. I don't know off the top of my head, but it's it's pretty high. Yeah. Okay. So so I mean, again, the general discussion. Wyandotte County, working class community, but even Kansas City, Kansas, is not a third richest county in the nation. So that person who says, well, I can go to Blue Valley. Of course you can. You can go to any district school, in, district in Johnson County and make more money. By definition, I, I don't even know what the janitors make. But if you, but we, this is what I, I'm, I'm not understanding why we're not understanding that we don't compare to the third richest county in the United States. I, I don't even know where why that county ranks. We don't even rank. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so let's be realistic and honest with ourselves. Yeah. If, if, if this candidate says, if you pay me 20 grand more, I'll stay. Of course you will. But if, if we do not have collectively 20 grand more to, to compete, let's understand that also. Mm -hmm. 
What other questions or comments, concerns? Uh, I just want to piggyback off of what Dr. Wynn said, which is why sometimes when you don't have the dollars, you have to make sure that you're taking care of your people other ways. And I know we're talking about compensation, but to me, that's where some of that exit interview information comes from uh, to be able to leverage like morale and those other things that we can control and have more control of. I want to say thank you for this analysis and spreadsheet. I know that even um, as we talk about what helps people to stay, um, it's just been um, a great opportunity to see how this board has supported having teachers get the supplies they need and the tools that they need to help in that classroom. We have to remember that just a year ago, we passed for our textbooks to be not 15 years old, because that's what they truly were, in a failing area of half the schools on probation to an upcoming schools, to a better environment, to having uh, listening to the teachers to where we could offer them um, updated resources and tools. And as I think about this, even for our families who live here, work here, and you know, decide to send their children to our school districts because we know that they have options as well, that this is a continual thing that the board looks at and we're passionate about ensuring that there's a balance of how we can um, support our teachers, support our administrators, support our leaders and everyone so that they can um, be proud of a district. And I think that goes back to like when I was in school, when we were you know, a little more ranked rather than in the bottom tier. Um, and I think we're getting back to that area, which is again, another attractive thing when people wanna be part of a win. They want to be part of succeeding school districts and they want to be part of not a stagnant school. So I think it is be beyond the money and we're doing um, the best that we can as a board to help support those um, better initiatives. I know, I know Janie has a comment. I wanna get her in and then I, I've got a comment as well after, so thank you. Okay, when we uh, started talking about this last year, it was kind of late in the budget process, and we said we wanted to address it this year. We were discussing the um, insurance compensation that we offer the upper level uh, executives. We wanted to discuss that. We were also discussing uh, the, tr the uh, car allowances versus mileage that gets turned in like quite a few of our employees do. I didn't know if that was what we wanted to discuss in this this uh, meeting or if we if that was still something people wanted to discuss or not. Well, and I'll, I'll piggyback before you all get into Janie's question because mine is, is similar. Um, I'm, I'm curious some of those you know to Dr. Wynn's point right we, we, we probably can't financially compete with the second richest county in the country. Um, but are, are there other creative ways um, in terms of any, you know, to, to Ms. Clark's point as well, right? Getting creative with our compensation and, and, and what and benefits and what that looks like. So I'm curious to Janie's point, right? Some of those things that, that we wanted to discuss, but did you look into, um, or could you share what some of those other opportunities for benefits and compensation that maybe are outside the box that we're currently doing or that we could be doing. I think that's also part of the conversation um, as well. So piggybacking off of Janie's questions as well. Is that a question you said, Dr. I mean, uh, Randy? Or what, yeah. other, what other things do we do? Well, we obviously have uh, vacation, time off. Those, those are the really the only other things that, um, that we provide and that's provided to all employees. So, um. So I guess, I guess that would be like a, just a, you know, are, are there other things and I don't, I'd have to look, I, I don't, I don't know, um, but just, you know, the other districts or other employees across the country, right? Like trends that are, that we might be able to piggyback off of in terms of creative, creative ways to provide some compensation or some benefits that maybe other districts around us may not be doing that may. Now, one thing NEA brought up. That and Greg, you can correct me. I may not be saying this correctly, but to give something to, to those who actually bought a house and live in the area, to give them some sort, you know, we give a lot of compensation for this and that, but they kept asking, what about for those teachers who actually bought a house, 
who live in the area that they work in to give them some sort of benefit. You know, we get benefits for everything else. And when I was teaching, I took advantage of it because it was an urban area. So depending on the type of loan, the loan was deferred. Yeah, and that is um, that is still being done, yeah. I believe. Um, and teachers take advantage because one reason I know is every year we have to sign that the teacher is still employed and it's for the purpose of either loans or scholarships or um, grants that they have had. Well, and, and we're not talking about teachers necessarily in this presentation, but the same thing holds true. We do have to remain competitive um, in, in when we are out recruiting for teachers in our district. So um, that, that is where we offer, for example, the hard to fill bonuses, where we offer um, that basically help with the masters if they're getting their masters uh, program. We have masters matching. We have, we have a lot of programs quite honestly for our teaching staff as well, which helps us be competitive. Uh, but that is one thing that we have to always look at, which we'll be talking about as we get into um, obviously negotiations and such. Do we offer uh, the master's or educational uh, matching for our administrative staff? Um, no. So if, we, so if we have a principal who's going for oh. their uh, doctorate degree or anything, we don't have a matching program? We would for, for those programs, I'm, I'm thinking more for just a... But we do have additional, com like, uh, additional compensation that you receive if you, Once you get there a master's um, yeah. degree. Uh, uh, you're on a different scale, but you also, if you have a doctorate degree, there is um, an amount that's added to your salary. Correct. Edu educational stipend. Is what there you go. <laughs> yeah. So is that is that added into this chart that you were showing us on this salary? I I believe not because that would only be if you have it, right? Right. That's exactly right. And and to be to be fair, Dr. McGill, I think the other districts do that as well. Sure. Yeah. That's that's common. That's common practice. Yeah. Okay. So when you're showing us their average principal salary on these charts. That's not including their yearly stipend for having additional degrees. Well, Rachel, did, did you, I'm sure you pulled actual data. So did it include the educational stipend in it? You may or may not. Um, when we're talking total compensation, yes. Right. That is going to include any additional stipends on top of the base salaries. When she was, cause she pulled actual data and gave you an average. So she looked at our compensation and our system and pulled, and that would include it in there. Okay. Yeah. Right, and the same would be true for the other districts as if they are paying right. a stipend for those kind of things that would be included in right. their compensation and would be averaged. So reality is we are doing exactly what all other districts are doing. We're offering all the same benefits be, that they are offering and the reason being because we need to be uh, competitive with them for talent for these positions. But but just to make sure I understand, but we're, we don't have a matching program for them doing it, going, getting what, it. What do you mean with, with, Janie for, with matching program? I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, like if like they were saying that the matching masters, like teachers yeah. going for their masters, they get matching money. We don't have that for principals or. Oh, no. We, we pay for it after they get it and we give them that stipend. Ms. Tushman, one thing that you said is we are doing exactly what other districts are doing, but we also have a lot of gaps and we have a lot of hard to fill positions. Other areas but I'm here to, my voice is for our district. And so why exactly what other districts are doing? I'm not expecting anyone to know the answer, but should we be looking at other things? How can we be a little bit more innovative to take care of our students versus saying we, we offer the exact same thing as other districts? That's not always great. So, so we're talking about, um, I think when that statement yeah. was made, Ms. Clark, was yeah. 
in terms of compensation. So I'm with you. I, I hear you with compensation. I okay. just think about what sets us apart. That's that's what I think about is what sets us apart, whether it be compensation, whether it be um, benefits, whether it be, I don't know, we are off on your birthday. I'm just I'm just saying what sets what sets us apart to be able to make sure our students are getting the education that they need. And, you know, I'm not saying I appreciate everything that has been presented today. But since we're having the conversation of how do we go to the next level? that has to come to me that has to be a question mm-hmm. what can we do well, mr lopez picking back on ms humphrey's question when do we do that and yeah. and my second question is and I'm, I'm sorry i may have missed the the time when do we specifically talk about the uh contents of the superintendent's contract so we have that discussion before we get to the day yeah so thank you for the, that question dr Wayne, because i was going to circle back around to that as well mm-hmm. i know that was something the board wanted to, to look at was the contracts and and some of the things that were in the contracts and uh, i would even include in there um, residency requirements for our um, um our, our cabinet level um leadership uh, is something that, that the board wanted to look at as well. So um, I, I would ask, I, I would throw that back at the board to see, I think this conversation around the compensation analysis was to, a starting point to look at mm-hmm. what are we doing? Um, so we, we all have an understanding of, of where, we at, where we're at. And I, and I appreciate um, Dr. Wynn, you pointing out just kind of those differences that we have to understand in terms of the funding sources and, and that nature and the, um, um, the tax base. Um, but this is a good starting point for us. Um, but I do think there has to be a follow-up in terms of looking at those contracts specifically that we want to. And, and then I'm going to lean on Greg a little bit regarding the superintendent contract and when that discussion um, should or shouldn't take place and, and how that how that takes place. I think, I mean, frankly, I think we need to have an executive session either in a special meeting or in one of the upcoming meetings fairly soon to start talking about the, what you guys want to look for in a superintendent contract. Obviously, those end up being negotiated, um, but I'm working on, on several for several other districts right now. So I can bring you samples of the contracts they've all got and sort of outline what's in them and, and what you guys might start expecting. And then if you guys want to look through provisions in the current one you have to see whether it's something you want to keep or something you want to change, it'd be best if we could have that sort of at least semi decided before you get to a final selection of your candidate. So sooner rather than later. Will we be able to get copies of those like anonymous copies of them to start looking through them rather than at the actual meeting so we can have some idea in advance? You mean of of other uh, districts contracts? They're all open records. I can send them to you whenever you guys want. Yeah, I think earlier would be better to give us time to be able to just kind of look through them um, and kind of get an idea of what they look like. No, I I can send you guys or put them in board docs or whatever you guys prefer. I think Vordox is fine. I think that'll work for me. Yeah. 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 Oh, I, I can get that part of it done next week so that you guys at least have access to look at stuff. And then I, I think then it's just a matter of scheduling the time so you guys can go through and say, this is something we're okay with, this is something we're not. And I can kind of explain for, to you at least what, from the negotiation standpoint with most of the superintendents, what components they're looking for in the contracts. Can we look at that at our upcoming meeting, the first meeting in uh, March? Do we have availability? Yeah, I'll, um, let me look at, I think that's what I was thinking, Dr. Yeager. We've got you know, a couple of special meetings early next week or late next week. So we'll get with Greg just to make sure we work out the logistics of how that should be on the agenda. Um, I don't think it's been published yet. So um, we can, we'll work that out. So I'll get with Greg to work that out. Thank you. And then back to Janie's question and, and Dr. Wynn's question around just the contracts and, and the compensation and the benefits that we wanted to look at. Um, um, you know, do when, when do you all want to have that conversation and, and have and look at it? I, I'm, I'm guessing you want that as a follow up um, to this this session. It seems like we, yeah, and I think we need to be. T- get into this budget because we don't know what the state legislature is going to do and how funding is going to go. 
So we need to get started on the budget and all this plays into that in terms of what we have available and what we can use because we get that standard complaint and it'll come up again in January that we're too top heavy. And when they look at academically the performance that gets thrown in our face constantly. I'm gonna jump and, in and I quick. think that was um, the intent of that very first slide. Um, Rachel, if you could go back to that where um, she was showing the percentages, uh, because we do know that there is that, um, the comment of top heavy and um, Rachel did look at that and how did our percentages compare to um, other districts? Well, I see the percentage, but when you look at the dollar amount, we're spending some big money. Now, can she show us that? How much do we spend compared to all these other districts? Because we're spending some money. Yeah, you got the numbers there, don't you? Uh, yeah, she's showing them now. This, this, yeah. this graphic has the numbers instead of the percentages. So look at your the red there. So for KCK, we spend 2.4. We have more administ we have more executive levels than maybe some. And then you look at uh, Wichita spends 3 million. Olathe is 1.8. It kind of flips between a couple of these different uh, areas, but you know, they're they're all in about the same range again for our size district. Okay. For the number of schools and the number of students and the number of employees is what we're really. Uh, saying there. Okay, now I'm not giving her this work to do, but when you look at the academic performance, that's where people begin to have issues. When you look at our scores, our graduation rate, our ACT, and right. you compare that, and we're all spending the same kind of money, but in the end, the result mm -hmm. is mind boggling. Yeah, you're right. So, so that, it, it says yeah. something that we got to do better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't mean that people aren't doing anything, but when you look at, you know, the data, it speaks, it speaks volumes. We got a problem. And the problem isn't new, unfortunately. But like I said, I, I, think, I think the problem came is when, you know, those outdated books, the outdated you know, text, you know, Matt has, and his team has done a great job of providing us with the updated tools because we had the money to do it, but it wasn't being done, you know, and making us aware of it allowed us to change it. So I think, you know, when we're looking at why isn't academics matching up or improving, what well, should be now, um, it's, it goes deeper than money. It goes deeper than salary. It really comes to how are we teaching? How are we um, providing updated equity to our students to having the same opportunities and access to resources rather than, you know, um, what was done in the past. Okay, but all I'm saying, and I hear what you're saying, that's beautiful, but the past is our part of our present. And, and the goal is where are we going with the future? But it is a problem. It even starts before the outdated books. We had some current materials and we still had the same issue. So we got to really look at some things about what we're doing. According to the report that Matt had provided to us, no area was up to date. All the stuff was either eight to 15 years old. And I'm saying when they were current, we weren't doing well. That's all I'm saying. But I think right now we are aware of what has not been done and we are on a path to move forward to try to bring about some change. Considering the fact that we've been dealing with the pandemic as well, that has stopped us in some areas. But rather than looking back, I think what's most important is for us to be able to look where we are now and just keep moving forward and, and complement and support those who are trying to put those things into effect so that the district can be successful. We have to keep, keep moving forward. Okay, but all I'm saying, and I hear what you're saying, yes, we should. And I'm like the Jewish community. You can't forget the past because you'll make the same mistake if you don't. 
you do have to keep that somewhere in your mind that some mistakes were made. We don't want to make that. Let's remember to keep moving, but we also have to go back and reflect. So Mr. Gonna, Lopez, <laughs> I, I dropped off. What is yeah. the topic we're talking about? <laughs> and I was just about to say that. So, so a couple of things, I was going to catch Dr. Wynn up. Um, Dr. Wynn, just a couple Sorry. of things. No, you're fine. Um, so Greg started talking and my connection just dropped. Yeah, so Greg's going to pull together or pull some superintendent contracts um, for us to review when those are going to be loaded on board docs this coming week. Um, so oh. we can start reviewing those ahead of time uh, or before we start having that, that conversation. So just FYI, those will be um, uploaded. Uh, Ms. Smith will let us know um, when those get uploaded on the board docs. And then um, we're suggesting to have a conversation, an executive session at one of our upcoming special meetings to start discussing um, the superintendent contracts um, and what we want to see or, or don't want to see in those contracts. So we want to have that, that conversation sooner than later. So we're going to look at potentially one of our upcoming special meetings um, that's scheduled to be able to have that conversation in executive session. Um, Lopez, um, you mentioned... Um... You mentioned a minute ago residency requirements, and I know that was of interest mm -hmm. to the to the board uh, when reviewing contracts. And we have some of that information from again surrounding districts um, that we could bring, we could make available to the board as to what residency requirements other districts in the area have. That, yeah, that that would be great. And if you could include that information or send that information over, that'd be helpful as well. Sure. Um, and then for the topic that we were talking about now, Dr. Wynn, um, we were just kind of going over the, the the numbers in terms of the the money that how we're spending our resources, where our dollars are being spent. We were Thank revisiting you. that second chart um, and how it com and how our academic performance, you know, is is also um, connected to how we spend our resources. And, and I was just going to add, um, you know, I think. One of the things that we're trying to, one of the ways we're trying to course correct to make sure that um, that that our the way we spend our resources um, is aligned to our academic performance through our strategic plan. And I know Dr. Miguel and the staff are really looking at that strategic plan and those um, those themes around social emotional supports, um, opportunities for, for college and career, engaging families, th those types of things. Uh, so so I think to to Ms. Page's point is you know, looking at our strategic plan, making sure allocating resources to support those areas. I think that'll translate both short-term and long-term to improve performances for our students. Um, but can I, I ask, can I ask yeah. a question? Does Dr. Yeah. Miguel, when you all talk about strategic, strategic plan, do you include a discussion on rose capacities or is that just kind of understood? Well, um, I, I have learned it's safer not to assume. So we are right in the process of aligning the strategic plan with the KISA um, goals that we have. So I'm going to make sure that I, that I bring that up just okay. to make sure that everybody um, is familiar with. Thanks for the reminder. Thank you. And, and Dr. Wynn, you were asking um, about Turner and I just checked while we were having the conversation and they have 4,000 students in the district. Okay, so they're too small as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. So I wanna bring us back um, to the conversation around, uh, you know, just the, the, the analysis that was presented today. And, and again, thank you, Rachel, for putting, pulling all that, all that information. I'm sure you had fun with it. Um, but <laughs> look, she loves it, she loves enjoy it. Enjoy that kind of work, I know, that's, uh, that's great. Um, part of your slides included some recommendations uh, in terms of next steps or moving further, going further um, with the compens or with the analysis. Um, can you can you remind us or Dr. Maybe this is a Dr. Miguel question. Um, so now that we have this information, um, what are some of those potential next steps or what 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 do you all think you know um, are some recommendations or I guess examples? Okay, so. Um Dr. Sure. McGarry, can I say something first? Um, <laughs> of course. Those, those were not recommendations, Mr. Lopez. Those okay. were if you decided to to move. Mm -hmm. but in, in, in the words of my good friend, uh, Miss Page, until we know some numbers from the district, we can't make a recommendation on taking people's salaries up. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for the clarification, Dennis. 
Thank you um, for the constant reminder, Mr. Covington. He he's my voice of reason when it comes to money. So our ne what we were thinking with this presentation is I will attach it to my Friday update so that you can have it there. I will print several copies. So if you, um, Ms. Page, we're going to make sure that you get a copy on Monday. Um, if anyone else wants a copy, we'll have them here um, or we will be more than happy to deliver. It's so much easier to see on paper, right? So please let me know, don't hesitate. And then we were going to just give the board some time to review, to send me some questions as you look deeper into these comparisons. I think um, a couple of next steps for us will be to do a similar comparison with North Kansas City um, Kansas City Public Schools in Missouri. Um, I'm thinking maybe Raytown, who may have a, um, they may have a similar demographic and it's not so far. Independence could be part of that. So we have a true picture of how do we compare with the greater Kansas City area. Um, I will also submit the comparison that we have on the residency requirements so that you have it as you, as you think about uh, contracts and next steps. And then um, I'm looking at my notes. Um, and then um, at, at the request of the board, if that's what, what the board wants, we would schedule another meeting to continue the conversation, answer all of those questions, and, and maybe do take some actions if the board chooses to go in that direction or if it's thought that now you have enough information and we have answered all of the questions, there isn't a need for a special board meeting, we could continue the conversation at a regular board meeting knowing that the bulk of the information was already submitted to all of you. So it will be um, up to the board to, to what the next steps are. We have a little bit of homework that I will um, submit to you once we have it completed in the next week or so, and then we'll go from there. But I would... Um, Welcome any questions or thoughts or, or ideas that you have as you review this in more detail next week. I guess I have a question for Rachel, Miss Numbers Crunchers. Um, <laughs> and again, I know that the last year's amount was like 15 or 16 million. What is, and this is just a tiny slice of compensation of the entire district. So in my opinion, not so much as Mr. Covington and, and Ms. Page, like we don't have any, we don't know numbers, but in the same vein, uh, it I don't think it would be very wise to start looking to in, do enhance the compensation of this sector when we haven't looked at the other sector of employees or the cost of instruction. Um, and, and Dr. Wynn, if, if, if it's the board's desire, we could also do, um, we stopped at leadership because we thought that that had been the request of the board. But if you would also like to see a comparative study of teachers, bus drivers, I mean, I think it would be um, useful for all. So, so we can continue the comparison at every level if that would be helpful to the board. But no, I would say not at this point, because at this point, I would think you, you're delving to, into your assessment needs for each attendance center. I would think that's that's has moved up to the priority list. But for this component, no, I mean, go back to what I thought where we left off last year that was going to be addressed in January, but looking at some of those fringe benefits, some of those those items that that I mentioned, and there was pushback because I guess there wasn't enough time to talk about it. But no, I'm not I'm not looking for any more comparison from any other sectors because still there is that whole teacher negotiation group, and and so. You know, at this point, I think you all have enough work <laughs> and we have work to do that we haven't started. Sure. Thank you. I mean, and I would let me throw this out just to muddy the water. <laughs> Greg, how much does Shawnee Mission save by having an in-house lawyer and having you guys just come for 
uh, litigate for, for court. You know, I mean, there's a lot of areas that we have to look at mm -hmm. to maximize our, our dollars that we don't know what That's we have. You must be muted or something. I can't hear you. Am I frozen? No, nope, you're not, Dr. Okay. Wade. <laughs> have I dropped again? <laughs> <laughs> no. Did Greg uh, say something? No, Greg. I think we lost Greg. No, I mean I don't I don't know what the we can't hear you, Greg. <laughs> He's speechless. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is my is is my screen not working or my we can, you guys not hear me? We can't hear you now. Okay. We can't now hear we... you, Greg. <laughs> Just a just a question, just a rhetorical question. Don't even ask. And, and then I and then I wanted to comment that when uh, Mr. Covington came on to our staff, he even uh, made mention of how we could bring printing in house and save money, and look and was able to look at some of the operations to see how we can bring other things in house. So I will continue to encourage for us to look at many areas because it's the printing, it's the, you know, when we decided on substitutes versus, you know, outhouses versus having our own. So there's many areas that we could possibly look at to see, you know, where there could, some cost savings could be. Yeah, definitely we can do that. So any any other questions or thoughts? I, I do. Greg, are, are you with us now? Do you have did you have anything that you wanted to share? You looked. Oh, now you're frozen again. Never mind. Um, <laughs> well, when, when are we gonna? This is good. This is a good start. So when do we actually begin to look at the budget? Because we don't want to wait, at least to start looking at where we are, what we want. Can, where can we you guys hear me now, or am I still from? We, we can hear you. <laughs> yeah, it seems that Zoom did it did, did an update that is why we're having some difficulties. If you didn't update your Zoom, then it's possible you're having problems. Okay, Miss Page, I'm sorry, you uh, Greg cut you off. You were in the middle. I'm saying, when are we going to start with the budget? It's March. We I, I know we got a lot on our plate. There's a lot going on. You you know, and we had said last year we wanted to get started earlier and not wait to the last minute. Now, I know some things we don't have, but what can we do to get started? At least get started. This is a good start. Yeah. And Dennis, I think you you um, you addressed some of it. Um, but do you want to respond to that? And because uh, I've been asking the same question and he has a very logical answer for why we haven't started yet. Dennis? Well, the, the main reason, uh, Ms. Page, is there's a lot of variables to actually get into the numbers, but there are some things that we can go ahead and start looking at so we can get some of this out of the way so that when the legislature do come out with whatever our number is going to be, like we have a, a, a um, opportunity to refinance some more of our bonds. And so in doing that, it may uh, affect our LOB rate, meal levy rate which will help us have more operating dollars. So uh, that um, first uh, finance committee meeting, we're going to go over that with the finance committee. Um, it was something else. The, um, oh God, I'm, I'm sorry, it just left me. But yeah, at the fin that first finance committee meeting, uh, we're going to go over three three things on that, that that's going to affect the budget. And then we, we will be getting with Dr. Miguel and do a budget calendar. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's really hard to do right now with this, all the stuff that's going on in legislature. But the first thing we're doing is we're having our, our principals do that assessment so we can know where our holes are. So that's, uh, we're going to meet on, I think it's Monday on that and send it out for them to get started on that piece because that's going to be the driving force this year for the budget. Mm -hmm. So we should have a calendar um, for the board 
in the next few days of how we're going to, going to map up um, the 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 calendar, uh, how we're going to map out the uh, budget process, and um, so that when we have the latest numbers and the and the updates, we are ready to go. And this was like the first. Uh, um, the first step because we knew that, that this had been requested by the board and we needed to present this um, financial information. So my question is when will the next committee meet? Uh, we have a date, let me look real quickly. The board, the board committee has two committees. Oh. This has met, the other has not. Yeah. Right, we're in the process of scheduling those, um, mm -hmm. Ms. Drew. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lopez, may I please add, also add that, you know, there was a delay this year in getting our KSD audit of our September 20th count. And so that is also going to be very influential on how we look at next year's budget on, you know, our at-risk student, our enrollment count, everything else. And so that's also possibly going to delay our budget season this year too. Thanks, Tracy. So um, just circling back around. So it sounds like Dr. Miguel, Mr. Covington are working out kind of a, a timeline, um, maybe some half day budget workshops and what that process is going to look mm -hmm. like. So um, whenever you do, we do have some dates, um, we can circulate those to the board to make sure that folks are available and we get them on, on, on our calendars. Please know our March is going to be very full, y'all. So mm -hmm. I hope we're, we're ready for a, a busy March, but that's a good thing. Um, so, so, that, so that's one piece of it. I, I do just want to circle back around again to, to Janie's question, Dr. Wynn's question um, around the contracts. I know that was something the board had requested to, to review um, you know, and I, I don't want to harp on it if it's something that we're, we don't want to do anymore, but I do want to respect and honor the request from, from the board. And if that's something that we do want to look at, um, you know, what, or I guess I'll ask, is that something that this board does want to review and have further conversation of? Um, now that we've seen this analysis, I think this is beneficial to that conversation. And then the residency piece that Dr. Miguel will send our way as well. Mm -hmm. I'm well, I'd like to see it because they we're also supposed to evaluate the fleet of automobiles. You know, yeah. we may not, we have <laughs> we may not be able to, to continue to have a hundred vehicles with with the the budget that we don't know we'll have. So, okay. yeah, we do have that one eight hundred dollar expedition that we pay hey eight hundred dollars a month for that we didn't know about till last year when it was too late to uh, terminate the lease that, that, we had, that we had questions about. So there's small items that we could work on that mm -hmm. don't take five hours, but. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, well, um, how about I work with, um, just so that, you know, to respect your all's time. I don't want us to be bouncing back and forth on trying to find a next date. Um, but you know, I can work with Ms. Smith and, and Ms. Page to, to get some dates out there for you all as a follow-up conversation. And that'll give staff time to pull that information around the contracts for us to look at as kind of a sec part two to this analysis conversation. Um, Dr. Miguel, I remember, at, or maybe it was, uh, no, I think Dr. Miguel, at the beginning of, of today's conversation, you had said that, um, that there were some thinking points that you wanted us to process? What, did we cover everything that you wanted to, us to cover? Was there anything else that you wanted to make sure that we um, were considering or looking at and, and had in discussion? No, I think you you have all covered everything and, and it was this was the kind of conversation that we were hoping this presentation would um, develop. And so the next step is um, for um, the board members to review again and just provide any further questions or any other information that you would want us to uh, look into. That will help. Great. And I did make notes of, of the different things um, that 
that we should start looking at to see what savings could we have. So we'll provide that information. But if you think of any other categories, by all means. Ms. Clark. Yeah, so when, um, thank you. When we get ready to meet next time, whether it be in an email or in the meeting invite or whatever, just to me, I just kind of need some clear expectation as far as what I should come prepared to, to be able to answer. Like, what does that look like? Because this is so big that you can end up down different rabbit holes. Yeah. And it, to me, it would be helpful if we could have had these, this information before the meeting to look at it because then we would have been mm -hmm. easier to ask questions. Sure. Be prepared to ask questions. And as you flip through the screens, I could have seen the uh, information. Yeah, and that, I'll, I'll take I'll take credit yeah. for that. I, <laughs> I, I, I spoke with Dr. Miguel about that, and we just you know I, I thought it might be a good idea to actually walk through the, the tables together. Yeah, because um, sometimes we can look at them and and, and pull things wow. out of context. Um, so I, so I thought this was helpful, but I, I absolutely agree. We'll make sure you have this so you yeah. can stick through it. But that was I'll take I'll take uh, credit for 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 asking Dr. Miguel <laughs> to do it um, <laughs> during the the conversation. So. Yeah. My laptop screen is awfully tiny. It's hard for me to see anything on it. Yeah. You may, you no. may have a big screen, Randy. I have a small one. <laughs> no, that's not, that's all right. So we'll make sure everyone has a copy of this. Um, doc, Dr. Wayne, it looks like you were going to say something. Well, else. I would like to respond to Ms. Clark's question for us to say, okay, are we going to look at compensation of the administrative executive such a group now, the next thing out, and or... Uh, start, you know, give us a list of the budgets and, and those that are not, it would seem, those that are not directly tied to instruction. Let's see if, if some of those um, budgets can be, well, we just analyze the budgets. But, but, but as she says, okay, if we say we're going to meet on Wednesday, we're going to look at X, Y, and Z. And we take a scaffold and trim what appears to be, and again, not saying anybody, I'm doing a Yolanda Clark, not, not saying anybody's not essential, but I don't know how you, you understand that the resources, they may or may not be there, but that we, we need to see right now what's essential toward instruction and what's not essential. And, and, and mm -hmm. let me step on this limb that's cracking right behind me. A drone may be essential or three drones may not. And that if, again, this is the question for, that I've asked Ms. Ms. Kaiser, you know, at what point do you say, hey, st don't spin down. You know, we've got to maybe to put some of that for summer school away. I mean, those kind of discussions, this is, this is March. We may have to have those discussions now. Do we have enough money for summer school? Mm -hmm. Where are you going to get it from? And we are having those discussions. Um, yeah, you are. We haven't. <laughs> right. So that's that's how I understood Ms. Clark's question. And I think it's important to understand that it is the superintendent's responsibility to already have those questions. And as the finance committee for it to bring it to us, we don't have to know every little small intricate, but as a finance committee, we should be able to be able to look at those things, but we're not the ones that's going out and going all the way down to the nitty gritty as a general board member, because the superintendent has that responsibility. We give her the responsibility to have the complete oversight of everything. If we say, oh, let's take away 20 pencils. We can't just or from the janitors. We don't need as many janitors, you know? So I think it's more than just looking at it on surface level, but it needs to be even a bigger dive. When board members ask for things, I wouldn't expect, oh yes, we'll run and do it. Yes, 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 yes. But then behind the scenes is causing hours and hours and tons of work for teachers, for leaders, and that's taking them off the scope of academics. You know, we can ask for 50 different things and get yes, yes, yes. But is it taking away from the actual work of being able to build up our, our academics? Because I always think to myself, you know, and looking back, why did it take 15 years or five years or 10 years for us to find out our books were out of date? That's a travesty. Before I was on the board, 
what took the attention away? What was the attention placed on? Was it running after these little things that, that was trying to appease who? Rather than truly sitting down and analyzing our academics, what were they doing? What was leadership doing? How could nobody have caught this? Why wasn't there intervention? Why was it? You know, in looking back, I could ask thousands of questions, but my question is now, I don't want to have everybody so bogged down and running errands for the board that they truly cannot do their job, which is academics. We're chasing that, have them chasing down a rabbit hole that can go many different ways, but how is that impacting academics? What have we put on principles to make them take away from being able to really sit and analyze what's being done in the classroom? So I just want us to be conscious of when we're asking and how we're asking that to allow the superintendent to truly make those decisions and consider when we're adding one more thing or five more things, how that could be taken away from academics or student, you know, student attention. Which goes back to the comment that I made earlier of the expectation for us for the next meeting. Right. So if we understand our expectation, then we'll be able to kind of move forward and know what we're doing for going forward. In that next meeting, what's the expectation of the board um, so that we're not adding extra layers, extra, I mean, so, so we're all on one page. This is Wanda Brownlee Page. I understand what was just said, but that's not the reason why we didn't have books. So I won't even get into that debate, that discussion. That's not being realistic. That's all I'm gonna say on that. That was not the reason. You're on mute, Randy. Thank you. <laughs> so good discussion. Um, I'm gonna bring us back. I, I do, I appreciate, I think that's a, a great um, suggestion in terms of having some key takeaways and key and, and discussion points for the next meeting um, to make sure that we stay on track, on task with the conversation um, and come out with some, some actionable items that, that we all feel good about. Um, so I will get with Ms. Smith to find that next date. Um, if you all would like to, to, to email me as well, like if you have some suggestions or thoughts on this is, these are the things that, you know, that, we, that I thought we were supposed to cover and we haven't yet, please let me know, um, send me an email so that we make sure that those, those things get addressed. Um, but um, we'll follow up. Are there any other final questions, comments, thoughts, Dr. Miguel, anything, anything else from, from your, your end? Dr. Wayne? Yeah, thank you. My only comment is that House Bill 2067 says the budget process must be aligned with um, in, in the general expectation would be improving student outcomes. And, and that's all I'm gonna say. Thank you. And Dr. Miguel knows that too. <laughs> yes, and, 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 and not to, to um, draw this conversation any longer, but I want to um, reassure the board that um, all of the conversations that we're having with different departments, right now we are in the process again, in preparation for our budget conversations of defining the um, priorities and goals for each department. And, um, and, and we are um, working really hard to help every department align those priorities and goals to our priority of um, high quality tier one instruction. So it, it is happening on not, not just on the instructional side, so, um, but also on the operational side. So for example, we're asking the questions of what are the goals of uh, the finance department that are directly aligned to student achievement? How, what is the impact that uh, the transportation department has directly on student achievement? So, um, and, and they are really good conversations and, and, and people are seeing that connection and the impact that each department has, not just the instructional side, but each department has on the success of our students. Thank you. 
So um, before we before we close, I'm not going to ask us to look for dates right now, but I just kind of want to get a sense. I know evenings can work. I know Friday afternoons seem to work for folks as well. Um, some 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 Saturdays. I, I don't want to take everyone's Saturdays away, um, but I just want to get a sense of do early. I know we've done it early morning meetings as well. You know, if we were to start at an eight o'clock or a seven thirty, I know we've got some working folks. Uh, so so I, I want to respect that, and I usually I try to stay away from that, but. Can early morning works, early mornings work for folks, or should we stay away? Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, if early mo mornings work for folks. Are you talking about during the week? During the week, right? I know it's hard to say. You know, everyone's schedule is a little different, but okay. I'll try to stay away from early mornings as, uh, as well. I think evenings and and uh, Friday afternoons seem to work for folks, but I was just trying to find some. Sometimes that maybe we wouldn't have to do after hours, but um, okay. No, thank you for that. Um, so Miss Smith and I will get together. We'll pull some dates. We've got a lot. Again, we've got a lot coming up in March, y'all. Um, so I, I, in advance, I just want to say thank you for your time. Um, you know uh, that that we'll be meeting. Rachel, thank you so much for pulling this information together. I know that Thanks, was Rachel. Problem. Yes. Uh, and it's very helpful information as well, Kelly, <laughs> Dr. Miguel. Um, you know, thank you so much for, for the information. Board, thank you for the thoughtful conversation. We'll follow up. Um, I think we've got some next steps, all of us do, um, in terms of what, what happens next. So um, just a reminder, we do have um, two special meetings planned for next week, um, Friday and Saturday. Um, so please make sure those are on your calendar. Um, and uh, Randy. Yes. Rachel, it was there was small print, but when I get it bigger, I I do appreciate the way you did put it in easy to read graphics. <laughs> I I will be able to understand it when I can read it. So thank you. <laughs> Not a problem. And Mr. Lopez, just for clarification uh, for the staff, uh, the two board meetings that you mentioned for next when uh, Friday and Saturday are for the superintendent search and they don't need to be involved, correct? Correct, yeah, it will we'll go straight into executive session so there won't be a whole lot of, um, no. yeah. Just before I started getting texts, I thought I would <laughs> make it public. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you for clarifying. Mm -hmm. right. With that, everybody enjoy your weekend. Um, this meeting is adjourned. Have a great- Thank you everyone. Bye. Have a great Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.